Happy Sabbath Christian family and to all our viewers online. We want to say welcome and this service platform. We want to thank you for choosing to have received the blessing that we anticipate today. Welcome to all the panelists. Glad to have you with us today. On the panel, we have our dear Elder Clarence, and we also have Sister Corleen, and we also have with us Sister Pearl. Thank you for being with us this morning. And to all those who are viewing, we welcome you to participate as you can post your comment on the YouTube or on your Facebook. Be not afraid, afraid to engage with us. Whatever question you sent in, we'll try our best to answer them by God's grace. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for keeping us through another week and allow us once again to come into your presence. Holy Spirit, who inspire the word, we pray that you may hope in the mind of our understanding. As we study your word, that we may be blessed and those who are viewing also will receive the blessing. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Um, throughout the last quarter, we have been looking at the covenant and we have been blessed thus far. This week, we are on lesson 11. We'll be looking at the new covenant sanctuary. You know, throughout the Bible, God has related to his people as he established a covenant agreement with his people. This is called the everlasting covenant, the covenant of promise that was brought to view in Genesis 3.15 and continue to be a presentation of the reality through symbols and types until type meet anti-type. The covenant agreement was given to us by the promise of the Father was to give us Christ so we can receive grace through faith. So we will turn our attention to um, Sunday's lesson. <clears throat> and in Sunday's lesson, we see relationship. God wants to have a relationship with his people, but sin is an offense to a holy God. And so he put in place remedy to solve the problem. In Exodus 25, verse 8, the Lord says, Let they build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Question I'd like to ask the panel if God is everywhere, why did he need? a structure to dwell with his people. I mean, God is omnipresent, he's everywhere. Why does he need a structure to dwell with us? I think God is a God of order. You know, whatever he do, he, he likes to be orderly. And in this scenario, God wants us, his people, he wants to dwell with us, he wants to tabernacle with us. He wants to be with us. And I think for that reason, he said, let us build, let, let us build a sanctuary that we, he may dwell among us. Okay. Also, the reason? sanctuary, uh, Elder Paul, the sanctuary uh, gave us a glimpse into what, the earthly sanctuary gave us a glimpse into what the heavenly sanctuary would be like. Yes. Uh, 
I, I do agree with um, both comments because like the sanctuary for God to dwell among us, it creates like that structured intimacy and everything where God really out of his love, he wants to meet it with us. Amen. Thank you. Um, the psalmist says, Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. And we know that this sanctuary was a pattern of the heavenly. And so the reason why God has um, ordered the sanctuary, this mobile structure to be built, is so that he can dwell with his people. And we see that the, the cloud that rests on the tabernacle, the Shekinah glory. And when the people um, has broken God's law, they were able to take their lamb so that they could come to the priest and they could receive forgiveness. Mm. So these are some of the things that um, makes the structure so important. And God wants to remove sin from his people so he can dwell with them. He can have that relationship with them. Amen. Also, I think as well, God is so intimate in what he does. And it sort of helps to reflect his love to us. He loves us with such an everlasting love. He wants to have us in that place where, he, where, where we can worship him and um, have a communication with him about things rather than just being in an open. Yes, he is um, able to be everywhere, but he likes to, because we are peculiar people, he likes to have that order in which he can um, be intimate with us. And even like with the fact that, um, with our sins, the, the provision that he has made from those days where we had to, um, it was, our sins was forgiven with the use of blood, etc. All this structure was made from then on. Yeah, and I think, um, I think too, we must remember that when God created man, created Adam in the, in the garden, his intention was always to have that intimate relationship with man. God would leave his heavenly kingdom and come down and sit in the garden with Adam reason with Adam, discuss with Adam. Now, man sinned and broke that relationship with God, but God have always worked to bring us back to that central relationship with him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So, go on, Sister Pearl, saying something. No, I, it's, it's mostly like just endorsing, endorsing what's, what's been said. And um, just as how he set apart the Sabbath for us to worship him, rest on that day and worshiping that was specific, or certain things are being done there and things. So that, that is how he is quite distinct and specific with things. Okay, so the, the sanctuary structure was put up to teach eternal truth, to give them a reality of what the gospel is all about. As is spoken in Hebrew 4, that the gospel was first preached to them. So the gospel was um, shown to them in type and symbols. And so God has created the means and the ways where his people can be cleansed from sin so he can dwell with them. So this relationship is a salvational, saving relationship that God wants to have with us. Yes. Amen. Okay, we're going to go over to... Um, so we're going to contrast this. I mean... We're talking about a new covenant. Now, we look at the whole covenant with the sacrificial system, and we'll be looking at the new covenant where a better sacrifice was made. In relation to the new covenant, Christ has come to dwell among his people. First John 1 John 1.14 says, And the word was made flesh 
and, and dwell bread. among us. And we behold his glory, the glory of the only begotten for, of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we see the promise under the new covenant is the same in principle. Um, as the scripture said, and what agreement at the temple of God with idol, for ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they Thank shall be my people. So we see the same thing that God wants to do amongst the Hebrew is the same thing he wants to do with us today. The only difference is we have a better sacrifice. But is God intent to dwell with his people, to dwell in us? And so is to remove sin from us because the temple of God should not have any agreement with idols. So um, <clears throat> this is the old purpose of the God covenant and the God relationship that he desired to have with us. Yeah, I think, the, Brother Paul, I think that um, the sacrificial uh, worship that we saw in the Old Testament, I do believe that the, the blood sacrifice were rather, were pointing us to that new covenant, which is, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that um, the killing of animals maybe did not bring any real redemption to man, but the obedience is what mattered. And I think the forgiveness came to obedience rather than the actual sprinkling of blood in man doing that which they were asked to do by God. And it was all pointing to the new, to the new covenant, which is established in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah, it says here, the person who had sinned and thus had broken the covenant relationship and the law that was regulated, it could be restored to full fellowship with God and humanity by bringing an animal sacrifice as a substitute, sacrifice that their rights were the God was was the God appointed means to bring about cleansing from the sin and guilt. They were instituted to cleanse the sinner, transferring individual sin and guilt to the sanctuary by sprinkling blood and re reinstituting communion and full conventional fellowship of the penitent with the personal God who is the saving Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to be looking at um, uh, Monday, sin, sacrifice, and acceptance. What is sin? <clears throat> um, we have sin, sacrifice, and acceptance. What is sin? Sin streams from disobedience. Okay. Transgression of the law. Transgression of the law, yes. Is that the way you could look at it? Disobedience to God. Yeah. Because until Adam, until Adam disobeyed, there was no sin. But sin came because of his disobedience to the command of God. First okay. John 5, 17 tells us all unrighteousness is sin. Yeah. Sin is a transgression of God's law. Sin is destructive by nature, and it separates us from God. So under the old covenant, a sacrificial system was put in place to deal with the sin problem. However, <clears throat> there was a specification what sacrifice was to be brought what sacrifice would be acceptable. It must be from among the clean animals. It must be without spot. It must be without blemish. However unblemished these animals were, they were not able to take away sin and clear the conscience. So, 
So thus the animal sacrifice was the means to foreshadow the coming of the divine human servant of God who would die a substitutionary death for the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. So even though God specified what animal must be used to represent his son, they must be without spot and blemish. Um, when we look into the new covenant, we could see the same principle. Christ is without sin, he's without spot, and he's without blemish. He's holy, he's pure, and he's clean. Yes. So if that be the case, why did God <clears throat> Why did God ask the Hebrews to bring the animal as a sacrifice if these animals were not able to cleanse us, to cleanse, to wash away sin? Why did God ask them to bring these animals for sacrifice? What do you think? Yeah. Well, as, as you said, Elder, um, sin is, is, is anything unrighteous. Therefore, one walks away from God by doing the things which is not of God. However, the sacrifice and obeying the, 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 the rules of the sacrifice, the unblemished animals and things, shows our obedience to the word of God. So therefore, as I said before, the, 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 the blood sacrifice were based upon our obedience and adherence to God's word which which would lead us to forgiveness because if god says that you must bring a certain animal on blemish to repent from that sin unless you acknowledge the sin you will not do what god have asked of you mm -hmm. right and acknowledging the sin then you obey god's command and do what that that he have asked of you okay any other view? Yeah, it, it's um, again as what it is um, the obedience and but more so when God asked it was it's it's more symbolic of the things that were to come. It it it, it was mm -hmm. pointing to the true sacrifice, our yeah. redeemer. Jesus Christ and things. So although in essence, that was not relieving us of the sin, but in that time, that was what was active. And it, it was a, a pointing out what was to come when our sacrificial lamb would come and take away our sins. Like Elder said, we would acknowledge our sins, confess them, and he would mediate on our behalf. Yeah. And so today you find there's still religions that are doing the same old thing as it was in the Old Testament, using blood sacrifice, which means they have not accepted that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. And also, if you should look as well, the animals that was chosen for the sacrifice was like the lamb, the pigeons, um, those animals that are pure and tend to be more spotless in, in, in our world actually even though it was symbolic it was again you said it was still pointing to the, the, the to Jesus Christ who is um, our everlasting father who is spotless and who would be the perfect um, sacrifice for us when he when he comes then you know. so yes so by faith they exercise faith when they bring that lamb and that's being required. It was God who initiates the service. It was God who gave the command to build a sanctuary. It was mm. God who set up the office of the priesthood. It was God who gave instruction of this um, salvation um, thing will play out. And so under the instruction of God, they should by faith behold Christ. Yeah. And it was, it was an expensive thing to be taking lamb. And so God was teaching them a lesson how expensive sin is, is. and how sin caused death. And therefore, God want, was to resign in their hearts. 
so that they will not sin. So they will not need to bring their animal to, um, to sacrifice in, 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 in such an abundance. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate. So yeah. God was teaching them a lesson that if they rely <laughs> upon him and walk, and he's walking among them and they follow his principle, there'll be no need for them to be slaughtering so much um, animal. It was a very, very expensive um, um, service that was taking place there. And you see how, how barbaric it was. People had to witness seeing animals, you could say innocent animals being killed. That is how awful sin is. And I think the shedding of blood, all of that sort of shows how unpleasant disobedience and committing sin was. And, and it, it's um, the other part of it that the, when, when I take my animal and I would have to, to as the sinner, slit the animal throat, then it is also pointing out that my, I should feel really guilty that it is because of my sin why mm -hmm. this, this, this animal has been killed. And it should bring me to that place where I wouldn't want to go and do it tomorrow again. Amen. So it, it's, it's subsuming and everything, but more so it is, it is a way where we can, I, we can look into ourselves and see what the real penalty of sin, of sin is. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so true. Um, it's supposed to clear the conscience to make you have this awareness of what's the, the, what the nature of sin is so that you would allow the Holy Spirit to help you to make that change and to live right. Yes. Um, what, what atoned for the sin? When they kill the animal, what atoned for the sin? What a tone it's, it's, um, it's, it's the blood itself. The blood that was required for the remission yes. of this of, yes. of, of sin then. So um in Leviticus 17 11 tells us that when you broke the law, when you does not follow God's express command, the law require that the wage of sin is debt. Sin is a transgression of the law. And therefore, the life is in the blood. Mm -hmm. And so the blood was used by the priests to sprinkle on the book on the people and in the sanctuary. So he mm. transferred the blood from um, the sin and he take it into the sanctuary yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all of those sin would stay there until the day of atonement yes yeah and he will cleanse the sanctuary mm -hmm. um and the day of atonement every year when the high priest go in so <clears throat> the blood is used as an atoning sacrifice Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> we see the same principle under the new covenant. So what we learn in the old covenant, we see the same principle in the new covenant. Yes. Christ also have to die and his blood shed for us. And that blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Yes. And that blood he used into the um, most holy place as our intercessor on our behalf. He pleased the blood of Jesus Christ to cover us and to cleanse us when we offer our prayers by faith to God through Jesus Christ. So yes. it's the same principle under the old, the same principle under the new. The reason why it's a better covenant is because tight meat anti-tight mm. and the true lamb of God has now 
died for the human family. Yes. Amen. And even just to confirm Amen. that as well, it was mentioned there in Hebrew 10 and 4, for it is not possible, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. And then in Isaiah 50. Three, again, it says that surely he has borne our graves and carried our sorrow, yet he did, he did redeem, we did redeem him stricken, smitten of God, but he was wounded for our transgression, and he was bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we were healed. I think I'm going a bit further than, yeah, but I, yeah, I just yeah. want to touch on the blood aspect of it. And then we can go on back to see where Jesus came into play to the end of the covenant. Okay. So the scriptures say Christ is a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Yeah. So the sacrificial system was used by faith to point to him who would come. And his coming, his dying covers the past, the present, and the future. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, any more comment before we move on? I think we've covered it. What do we do before the covenant? Okay, did Christ volunteer to come and die for us? Was he forced? Was he volunteer? Was, what do you think? Well, I think Jesus was there from the creation and he was there, he witnessed his sin. And I would imagine that was um, an agreement between himself and his father, father of love, that he would come and die for a fallen world. He said, I lay down my life, no yeah. one take it from me, and I take it up again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Christ will not force um, to die for us. Volunteer. But Christ dying for us shows the loving nature of our Heavenly Father God, who despite the sinful nature of man, remembering that God did not create man that we should die. He gave us life and that we should live forever. And despite our sinful nature, because of his great love for us, he would send his only begotten son to come to earth, to live among us, Firstly, to teach us the way that we should live, and then to give himself as a sacrifice for our sinful ways, even though we are still sinners. It is a wonderful love. It is a love beyond all comprehension that man could comprehend. You know? mm. And so we are in appreciation for that love. We have to commit ourselves to faith, to serving our Lord and following examples of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and um, it, um, it showed how faithful and determined Jesus was. He endured to the end, despite all the agony and everything. At, he asked his father to take the cup away from him, not as his will, but according to the father's will. And his words on the cross were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So despite all that he'd been through, he never, he never gave up. And that is out of his voluntary love for humanity. Yes, and um, I have to say that Jesus' life on earth with us has, is, is a complete life. Huh? Because if Jesus had just come and died, then we would not have known the way to correct our own life. Yeah. But he first lived yes. so he could show us the example by which we should live before giving up his life for us. So it was a complete life, um, showing us how to correct our life before then giving his own life for our... Um, yes, I agree that um, he exemplified all the way we should live. So his life rendered him the perfect sacrifice because his life was sinless. Yes. Yeah. However... Angel is also sinless. So why take Christ to die for us? <clears throat> I 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it was out of God's love for humanity why he made that. Gave oh, that so he was the only one that was worthy of, of making that sacrifice for us as well. He was spotless. Um, he was perfect. He he. He was just the ultimate sacrifice um, that was, when, I mean, when we read in um, Isaiah, again, we go back to Isaiah where that prophetic mention was made there in Isaiah 53. He said, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone unto his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. But, but it's a, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearer is done. So Jesus was just the perfect example to actually lay down his life for us. Yes, yes. and to the question, and, and, yeah, to, the question, and to the question, Elder yeah. Paul, I'd just like to say that um, Jesus did not just die for mankind huh? on earth. Remember when Lucifer revolted in heaven, even the angels, many of the angels followed Lucifer. And therefore, even the angels were not perfect, right? And therefore, Jesus being sinless and guiltless, being sacrificed in the way that he did, was an example even for the angels in heaven. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, first, Jesus. First, first Peter 1 20 said that Christ's death for us was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Yes, amen. Christ is the ultimate sacrifice because only a divine being can satisfy, satisfy the demands of the law. Mm. Angel could not die for us. No mm. one else could die for us. Only a divine being is able to die for the human race. Christ is a divine being. And this is why he's the ultimate sacrifice that could have saved us. Amen? Amen. Shall we go to um, Tuesdays? <clears throat> why do we need a substitute? Um, Jesus gave himself for our sin that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. We are unable to save ourselves. In the Hebrew tabernacle, the animal was used as a substitute to bear the penalty of the sinner. Under the new covenant, Christ become our substitute by dying on the cross to pay for our sin. And as we say before that Jesus voluntarily comes in the volume of the book, and he lived a perfect life that rendered him the perfect sacrifice. And the sacrifice was to pay for our sin so that we may have um, redemption. Was the covenant that God gave to the Hebrew, was it for everybody or was it for the Hebrews? Is this covenant relationship for the whole world? It was, it was for everyone because it was pointing to Christ who would come and die for all mankind. Yeah, the but, the world, okay, but the world wasn't doing um, sacrifice, only the Hebrew was. No, but the Hebrew was supposed to be an example for the rest of the world. Because when God chose Israel, okay. he did not choose Israel for Israel's sake. He chose Israel so that Israel would bring an enlightenment to the rest of the world. Yes. <clears throat> Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. So that oracles, those principles that has been given, they were supposed to teach the world. And any stranger adjoined to them must also do the same. And so um, this was the gospel in type and symbol until the, until the reality comes. Whosoever join unto the Hebrews, 
was supposed to follow the same principles. But God from the foundation of the world sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. So what did this sacrifice accomplish for us? How did we benefit from it, from the, the sacrifice that Jesus made? What, what, what did it accomplish for us? <laughs> well, it really can't come out of my mouth, but basically it, it was the ultimate sacrifice, really. He was able to redeem us. It's almost like we were falling into sin and it's like, it's like almost like a trade where Jesus buy us back. We were redeemed as a result of it. Mm. Um, if, if you think, and it says, uh, even in, in, um, in first Peter, it said, we were, we were not redeemed with corruptible things of, of silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, who was the perfect, who was, was brought as a lamb without blemish and without spot. But okay. um, having done all that and have made all that sacrifice for us, we were able to redeem and have the, um, the plan, this plan of salvation was fulfilled, whereby all our sins were forgiven. And we had that hope where we could be able to go back, to get back into the right relationship with Christ because sin had separated us then. So having that redemption has really brought us back. However, Okay. Um, we are redeemed through grace and faith. We are redeemed, but redemption does not come automatically to all. Eh? We must first, we must first obey, and by faith choose to follow the way of Jesus Christ. I like that word choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, if Christ loves us so much that He yeah. still give us that choice, despite that sacrifice that He made for us, He still would not force us to accept Him. And as you say again, for God's all of the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever um, is willing, or whoever, whoever believes it, should come to actually accept that present that he has given us. Yes, yeah, because if we, if, if, we look at the rea if we look at the reality, and we see that Israel that was chosen by God, many still do not accept that Christ is that sacrifice. So it is by choice and by faith we are redeemed. Amen. Amen. Can we look at some of what the um the the, the YouTube um comments on? Is anyone able to see any of those coming in? Sorry, I didn't. Um... I am not keeping note, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. So, all right. And uh, we move on then. <clears throat> so, Christ that give us hope freedom, restoration, forgiveness, grace, mercy, all of that has accomplished for us. And he will see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Amen. How did he confirm the covenant? How did Christ confirm the covenant? Um, in Daniel 9, 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. Um, the curtain was ripped from top to bottom, type meat unto type, for this is my blood which confirmed the covenant between God and his people. So Christ of a courtyard experience when he gives his life on the cross for us. I was just looking at what some, somebody came in, Brother Leslie was saying that Jesus died from the foundation of the world. So salvation was always based on Jesus' death. Um, however, something is, Sorry. Man, however, needed to demonstrate their faith in Jesus sacrifice by making an animal sacrifice. And then he carried on and said, recall that Jesus often said, um, thy sins have forgot, forgiven thee. These cases have sin be forgiven without sacrifice. Blood sacrifice was not necessary for forgiveness. 
that God's sacrifice was not necessarily for forgiveness. That was what um, one of the comments that we had there. Without the shedding of blood, without the shedding of no remission of sin. Yeah. There's no remission of sin. A bloodless sacrifice they meant to say, probably. And then he said that the sanctuary in the wilderness was not a place of worship. It was a place used as an object lesson of God's plan of salvation. Yeah, so that, that's all. I think that, as you said, you've corrected that one there. That you've mentioned about, recall that Jesus often said, thy, thy sins be forgiven thee. These cases have sins be forgiven without sacrifice. As in when he walked the, the, um, the earth. Yeah, tis, tis all the, the ceremonial and sacrificial um, rituals were, were ended at, at the cross. When, when Christ died, all of that came to, came to an end. And then he became our, our sacrificial, he was our sacrificial lamb who now is mediating for us um, in, in the heavenly sanctuary. Amen. Um, worship is not just verbal saying words. Worship is action. Worship is obedient. And uh, when you come to the altar, you come to worship. When Abraham makes the altar, he make it to worship. Um, when, when Christ is behold, you are worshiping. And therefore, worship comes in the various format, in your obedience, in your walk, and um, whatever God requires. Uh, worship is a lifestyle. It's not just go down on your knee and say a few words. All right? So just to clarify, what does it mean to worship? Yeah. Why was it new? Why was this covenant, you should know this, why was this covenant called the new covenant? Well, if you were to look back on, look back on the whole history of the different of the covenant that was made, um, there was a covenant made back then with um, Noah. Um, God, God made an, 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 an covenant with Noah and he said to, 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 to us that the earth would not be destroyed with water in the future. And again, he also made a covenant with Abraham um, that he would, be, uh, he would be the father of many nations. And help me out, Sister Pearl. And, <laughs> and the third covenant was with Moses. Wait, he made Moses a family of, of, of priests. So those were classic um, examples of covenants. Yeah. And they were sort of all pointing to um, the, the the, all this, um, um, these, these practices that we used to have where animals was slaughtered, it was all again pointing to the, the ultimate covenant, which where Christ was going to come to die for us. And to okay. us. Uh, okay, thank you. The covenant, the covenant is one. There's elements within the covenant. The covenant is one. There's protection. There's deliverance. You have the rainbow, the Sabbath, the circumcision, and all of that. All these different elements is within the covenant. Yeah. But the covenant is one. What makes the covenant new is those it's things <clears throat> that as fulfilled in Christ, like the sacrificial um, system that was pointing to Christ, the better um, the, 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 the lamb, the reality, type meat anti-type has now come and fulfilled those sacrificial system. But the principle, as we were outlining before, is the same. So yes. he said a new covenant because true Christ was given his life to save us and he is our high priest. Yes, and all... Everything that's gone before were pointing to the new covenant. And that new covenant is the everlasting covenant because that covenant is what will take us to the very end of times, to the new, to, to the new heaven and the new earth. 
Uh, will, uh, as you I, said, Elda, will there be a time when the covenant ended? Will there be a time when the covenant is no more? There'll be a time when the covenant is fulfilled to its fullest when Jesus comes burst into the cloud. I would say we come to fruition because, I mean, the whole covenant is pointing us to that ultimate time when we're going to. Yes. I think it's an everlasting covenant, really. And so, and so, the fruitful element of that covenant is the coming of the second coming of Lord Jesus Christ, which will bring us to that new destination where there shall be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, and the world shall be renewed. Okay, God, element of the covenant will fulfill, but the covenant remains. Yes. We shall study the cross throughout eternity. Yeah. It yes. Is God who made a covenant between himself and, and his people, and that will never change. Yeah. All right. Because even as you said as well, even if you have if you yeah. look at the old covenant and the new covenant, it's almost like it's 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 a repetition of the same thing. But ultimately having the new the new covenant, it's all sort of emphasizing what was actually portrayed from the first, really. Okay. From the old. And the law is now written in our hearts um, as, as, as opposed to where it was just written on, on, on the stones. Amen. Tablets of stones. <laughs> now, we established why the covenant was new because Christ is the better covenant. Mm -hmm. um, when Christ died on the cross, and he said, it is finished. What was finished? All the, the ceremonial battle. laws, the killing of, 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 of lambs and pigeons and bullocks, that was done away with. Because okay. the ultimate sacrifice where Christ came to, to die for us, his was what replaced all of that. And all of those practices was, sort of foresh was foreshadowing what was to come. And he had come to, to achieve that. Is there another? Is there the, another? Is there another finish that he will say it is finished? The controversy um, ended there, where he would bruise his head, and where Satan would bruise his heel, and um, Christ would bruise his head. So that part of the the, the controversy where his heel was bruised, that was finished. That was finished. So yes. the sacrificial system that was in place, that was pointing to Christ, is now finished. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. But man's salvation has not yet complete. Why? No. Why man's salvation has not yet complete? We are on Wednesdays. You see. Because we have an eye preach. Yes. yes. Now what, is he, what is he doing? He's he mediating is on for our us. behalf. He is continuously, inter he is interceding for us. He is reflecting us, his tons. Um, if we accept him, he will still represent us to his father. Even though we are sinful, but with his righteousness, he's able to do that. Yes. So, and um, Okay, go on. Have, yeah, we, 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 we have to understand that from Christ died on that cross, we have entered a new phase, which is the point of probation. Where now we have a period, a period of probation in which we must prove ourselves worthy to inherit that promise of God. And so we're not, sorry, go ahead. So as, as, as he's in the most holy place interceding for us, yes. when, we, when we pray and we send our sin before the judgment, Christ is the mediator between God and man. And yes, he right. through his blood and our behalf. So we have one. <clears throat> we have been justified by his blood. At the cross, we receive justification. In the sanctuary, we receive sanctification. When he returned, we receive glorification when mm -hmm. we shall change from mortal to immortality yes yes so this is why christ and when he finished his priestly um administration he will said it is finished, finished. 
nothing that is filthy be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Yes. yes. So Christ is still our advocate today. And so the beauty still about still it living. is that Christ has been, is also man and God. What perfect representative we could have. He knows, he, as, as it had said in Isaiah previously, he said he has borne our griefs. He knows our sorrows. He can, he knows what, he can communicate, he knows what we're feeling. And at the same time, because he is God, his, his, it's only his blood that could actually be used to justify for us. He, he's an advocate, he's a high priest, so he's judging us as well. So that's the beauty that we have. And as a result, he will redeem us from all our sins if we just obey him and choose to follow his way. And he's continuously interceding for us. So he's also giving us time. And we have to make note of that, that we have to try and make use of the time we have here. Yeah, and remember okay. that Jesus left us with the most perfect promise that he has yes. gone to prepare a place for us. Yes. And he will come again. And if he has gone to prepare that place for us, he shall yes. return to take us unto himself. But not everyone shall go with him. There'll be many who would, who would reject him and would not be able to go to that place with him. And you know, recently when I was reading Sabbath school lesson, I was thinking, God took six days to create this world, yet he has gone to prepare a place for us. Can we ever stop to imagine what has been prepared for us? We'll never do that. Because if mm. he's taken all this time to do it, guys, can we imagine what we have to look forward to? Amen. Uh, we're going to move Lord. on quickly now as time, <laughs> time is coming to a close. And Thursday, it says the heavenly ministry. Um, Christ says, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. <clears throat> we are not able to stand in the presence of a holy God. And Christ has entered into the veil with his own blood. Christ now appears in the presence of God for us. We have a representative before the Father on our behalf. Think of how loving, <clears throat> forgiving, and accepting Christ was when he was on earth. As Sister Carlin was saying, um, Jesus is both God and man, a sinless, perfect being. He's the only one who could bridge the gap that caused sin between man and God. For we have not an high priest which is not being touched with the feeling of her infirmity, but with in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus become the sacrifice upon which the blood of the new covenant is based. Christ's blood ratified the new covenant. The true sacrifice has been made once and for all. Mm -hmm. So there is no need for any more um, animal sacrifice. Yes. And so we can now come boldly to the throne of grace where we can find help in time of need. And yes. as Sister Colin mentioned, Jesus <laughs> being both man and God. When we ponder upon the real love of God and we see that Jesus knows all our weaknesses, that he did not even leave us alone. He sent us the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us. Yes. And to put us, because he knows our weaknesses. He was here with us, and he knows the things that will divert us away from him. Amen. Just looking at a comment that was made here. It says, um, Jesus died from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. So salvation was always based on Jesus' death. However, needed, no, sorry. Man, however, needed to demonstrate their faith in Jesus' sacrifice by, oh, sorry, they're making an animal sacrifice. That was probably repeated, sorry. <laughs> I understand, I understand. Yeah. Um, Christ died to save the world, but we don't have access to what he has done except we receive it by faith. That's what mm -hmm. the person was trying to say. Because how will you have the saved and the lost? Those who did not accept such a great salvation that has been given by faith. So even though Christ has died for us, we have to accept it, accept him by faith. Yes. 
so he can justify us with his righteousness. The just shall live by faith. Faith, yeah. Amen. 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 So we have looked at the old and the new, and we have seen that Christ is the better covenant, and through his death, through his life, because his life have to render him the perfect sacrifice, and his death that paid a ransom for us, his resurrection give us hope, and his ascension on our behalf to complete his meditorial work on our behalf. And when he took that princely robe off, he put on the robe, his kingly garment, to come and to take us home. So this is good news, right? Yeah. The covenant and said, relationship that he you made. You said that before, sorry to interrupt. He said his, his resurrection gives us hope, but yes. also physical evidence of the fact that if we, through faith, would believe, the reality is we too shall live. Yes. And when I say his um, resurrection give us hope, if Christ is not risen, our salvation is in vain. Yep. Amen. Because he's the resurrection Amen. and the life. Amen. I just want to so we're gonna, we're gonna um, go on. We have a I few more minutes. This as well. Um, if you think of it as Jesus, who we have as our advocate, our mediate, meditator, he is also aware of the war that we're living in. And mm. he is there like as a, almost like a commander in the war zone that we are in. He's there to listen to us, to hear our prayers when we pray. He's there to provide the Holy Spirit as well. So that's something that we should be, we, we also need to be mindful of and be grateful of that. Even though he's interceding, he's there seeing everything and he's there providing everything for us with, through his love to, um, to try and redeem us and to, um, when he knows that temptation is coming, he's, he's providing a way of escape for us through his Holy Spirit. Yes. Because he, he has become man and he has experienced everything that we have experienced. Yeah. He's our sacrifice, he's our savior, he's our high priest, and he's also our judge. So we have nothing to fear than to walk in the way of righteousness that he has shown us mm -hmm. by his grace and through the power of the Holy Spirit. So thank you panelists for sharing your thought in this study. And we, I hope that everyone who has been listening has been blessed. And I hope that um, whatever has been said, um, the mind has been informed. And um, we have this assurance now that we don't need to worry. We can come boldly to the throne of grace because we have one that has been touched with our infirmity. One who has point as um, in all point sin like as we are yet without sin and has given us an open door, has given us access where we can come boldly to the throne of grace. So may the Lord help us as we have this privilege to come and to taste and to see the goodness and the grace and the love and the mercy of God. Father in heaven, we thank you for Holy Spirit, we thank you for directing our studies today. We thank you for all those who are listening. We pray that their heart may be watered, they may be blessed. We thank you for the input, the understanding that has come to us from your word. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that we may live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.